Good day, Great Pearls. Welcome back to these lessons. I hope that you've had a very good break and um, I don't mean to be boring, but I really hope that you've used this lessons, I mean this time, to actually go over your work and that because grade 12 there's only a little bit of time left and then it's your finals yay good for you but it does mean that you should have been using your time of a break for revision if you didn't that's fine but i suggest that you get stuck in now because there's only a few more weeks until your prelims but i'm sure you don't need to be reminded of that okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go on going through paper one and two questions like we've been doing all along um in this lesson well it depends on how far we get but it looks like we're going to be going through a mixture of paper one and paper two questions so we'll see how it goes okay it says the graph below shows a sketch of f of x is equal to minus 2x squared so that's pretty easy because all it is is a parabola going through zero and it has the equation minus 2x squared r is a point six zero okay so r is a point six zero and q is a point q zero and points p and t are points on f okay it says rst is parallel to the y-axis which means that the x value at t is going to be six okay we don't know what the y value is but the x value is definitely going to be six it says and ps is parallel to qr okay ps is parallel to qr all right that helps and it also says pqrs is a rectangle pqrs which means that this is also parallel which means that that little point there is going to be q as well x is q something we don't know what it says write down the coordinates of p in terms of q okay so do you agree if we're doing it in terms of q then it's pretty easy because the x value at p is going to be q and for the y all you do is substitute q in wherever you see x so it becomes minus 2q squared now it's a bit small so i'm going to write it over here p is q minus 2q squared we know it's q because it's got the same um, x value as the big point q okay so therefore the x value is q and f of x which is y is equal to minus 2x squared which means that the y value of p has to be minus 2q squared now it says show that the area of this rectangle can be expressed as a is equal to 12q squared minus 2q squared okay so let's talk about area do you agree that area is equal to length times breadth okay and do you agree that I know that the length of this line is going to be 2q squared okay how do I know that because the y value at that point is minus 2q squared and the minus just shows that I'm below the x-axis therefore qp the length of qp is equal to 2q squared right the length of qr is 6 minus q because 6 the value 6 minus q is going to give me the length of qr therefore the area is going to be 2q squared multiplied by 6 minus q 2 times 6 is 12 so it's 12q squared minus 2q cubed and that's exactly what they asked us to prove yay now they say determine the maximum area oh dear it's gonna go away any minute now probably we'll see it says there we go oh, i don't know why it does this every now and again uh, slide from beginning 
Okay, so we've just proven that the area is 12Q squared minus 2Q cubed, okay? So I'm not going to write it all out again. We've just proven it. So now to determine the maximum area. So guys, whenever they say determine the maximum or minimum, what are they asking us to do? They're asking us to differentiate and find what? And find the... For the, the zero point of the first is derivative, okay? So we know it's solved for zero. So we've got A is equal to 12Q squared minus 2Q cubed. So do you agree that A dashed of P, if you want to think of it that way, is going to be what? We take the 2 to the front, so it becomes 24Q minus 2 times 3 is 6 Q squared. And now for a maximum, what do we do? We let a dashed of p equal zero for a max or a minimum. Okay, so in that case, we've got 24q minus 6q squared is equal to zero. Is there anything we could do there? Is there a uh, common factor or two that we could take out and the correct answer is yes we could take out 6q so if we take out 6q do we agree that we left with 4 minus q equals 0 okay so therefore we've got the q 6q equals 0 or 4 minus q equals 0 so that doesn't really help me because of the fact that therefore Q is going to equal zero, it cannot give me a maximum area. So we have to therefore solve this one. So therefore four is equal to Q. Right, that's awesome. But what was the question? The question, what is the maximum area? Not what was the value of Q. So what do we have to do? We obviously, obviously need to now substitute this 4 plus q, 4 equals q into this equation to find the maximum area. So I'm going to change the color pens and then I'm going to go okay. The area is 12 times by 4 squared minus 2 times by 4 cubed. So it's 12 times by 16 minus 2 times by 4 cubed and I don't actually know what 4 cubed is on the top of my head so 4 to the power of three. Oh, that's not going to work at all. Four to four to the power of three equals sixty-four. Okay, so it's going to be sixty-four. So then, what do we need to do? We now need to look at multiplying this out and putting it all in the calculator. So let's go find the calculator, and we're going to go twelve times sixteen equals one hundred ninety-two minus, how is that possible? We're going to end up with a negative, aren't we? Okay, let's have a look. 2 times 64, maybe not, is equal to 64R. So area is 64 square units or units squared. So there you go. What is the maximum area? It is 64 units squared. Not too bad. Hey, you just have to keep your head about yourself and just work things out nice and slowly. Okay, so now let's talk about some finance, shall we? So we're going to be looking at Patrick. Okay, and we need to work out some finance based on Patrick. So first of all, it says Patrick opens a savings account on the 1st of January 2012. He makes an immediate payment of 2,000 Rand into the account and thereafter a monthly payment of 1,200 Rand at the end of each month. The last payment is on the 31st of December 2013. Interest is calculated at 8% per year compounded monthly. The next thing it says is calculate the value of Patrick's investment on the 31st of December 2013. Okay, so what you need to realize is that he's made two separate types of payments. He's made, okay, we're not going to draw all of them, but on 1 January, 
he's made a payment of 2,000 Rand and it's going to be compounded, okay, till the 31st of December, okay. He also has made payments of 1,200 Rand at the end of each month, okay, at the end of each month. And the last payment happens to have been on the 31st of December. And they want to know what is the value of his investment. And this is 1,200. Okay, so we need to break this up into two bits, okay? The first one, what we're going to do is use the future value formula. And the second bit is using just a compound interest formula. And then we're going to add them together. Okay, so first of all, the future value formula is, and I just need to look it up for a second, just wait a second, is going to be the future value formula F is going to be X bracket 1 plus I to the N minus 1 over I. Okay, and our compound, compound interest formula you should know a is equal to P 1 plus I to the power of N. Okay, so we're going to use both of these to find out exactly how much his investment. This is for the 2000 Rand. A is equal to P 1 plus I to the N is for the 2000 Rand that we originally invested in. And this is for 1200 Rand that is getting its extra interest. Okay, so Therefore, our formula is going to be, and I haven't left myself much space to write ever. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to change this a little bit. Just hang on a second, please. Dush, 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 dush. I'm going to move this up. Okay, that's a bit better. And now let's go back. There we go. But now what I obviously need to do is erase all ink. Okay. So we're going to go there for the total investment I, the investment, is going to equal, what did we say? We said it was the compound of the 2,000 Rand. So it's 2,000 Rand and it's 1 plus, what is the interest rate? It's 8% per annum compounded monthly. So therefore it's going to be 0, 0,08 over 12, that's the 8% compounded monthly and then we want to know how long it's gone in for. So it's obviously gone for two years, which is 24 months. So therefore it's 24. So that there is a compound interest on the 2000 Rand. Now we go plus, we're paying 1200 Rand each month. It is going for one plus 0, 0,08 over 12 to the power of 24 minus one all over 0, 0,08 over 12. Okay, so let's do this on our calculators. And again, grade 12, I need to point out that the reason I'm showing you how to do this in your calculator is because I find so many of my students can do this bit, which I find to be the hardest bit. But then the minute that they actually have to um, do it on the calculator, something goes wrong and then they end up with a bad answer. So let's go through it. So let's do the first bit, which is this um, compound interest bit. So that should be fairly easy. It's 2000 bracket 1 plus 0 0.08 all over 12 bracket, oopsie, sorry, close bracket to the power of 24. Equals, so that's 2345 comma 78, 2345 comma 78. So it's 2345 comma 78 plus, now let's put all this into brackets. So we're going to go and let's just clear it and we're going to put a fraction. So we're going to go 1200. Mm, let's try again, 200. Let's try again, delete 200 multiplied by, and we need a square close bracket, and then another black bracket, one plus fraction, naught point naught eight, all over 12, 
and then close bracket to the power of 24 no let's go back 24 minus 1 close bracket and then we go down and we put another fraction in 0.08 over 12 and then we pray that we haven't made a mistake and we go equals yay 31,119 and 83 cents so what is that that's 31,119 and 83 cents 31,119.83 cents and then we add the two and we get three three four six five comma well let's have a look three and eight is eleven carry one eight and seven is fifteen that's sixteen okay and don't panic if you get 3,345,60 or 6,2 or whatever. That's rounding and there's no big deal for that. Where's the mark allocation for this? Well, just for interest sake, the mark allocation is the fact that you got 0, 0, 8 over 12. The fact that you realized that this had to be a compound interest formula. The fact that N was 24. The fact that this yeah was substituted incorrectly and a final mark for the answer so that is where the mark allocation came in okay so now we know that the total investment is 33,465,61 okay now the next part of the question says Patrick decides not to withdraw the money on 31st December 2013. He makes no further payments and the investment earns the same interest rate. Calculate the value at the end of, on the 31st of May 2015. Okay, so obviously then this thing is not, we're not paying any more in. So we're not using the future value formula more. All we're doing is using the compound interest formula. And we, in other words, we're using A is equal to P 1 plus I to the power of N. Okay, so now let's think about this. We know that the principal is 33,465,61. 1 plus the interest rate is 0, 0,08 over 12. But now how many payments? It says he did not withdraw the money that makes no investment in the same interest rate. And the interest rate was at 8% per, per year compounded monthly. 8% per year compounded monthly. So do you agree that what we need to do is we need to multiply this by the number of payments that there were and the number of payments that there were were what? Um, it works out to be 20, okay, so we're going from the 31st of December to 31st of May 2014. So, and remember it's compounded monthly. So we're going um hang on a minute we're going december 31st of december to may so therefore it is five months so it's to the power of five and if we put that in our calculators we end up with 34,596,10 so that was a pretty easy question that last question okay Right, if you put the use the wrong formula, you get zero marks. But if you brought down what if you made a mistake in this previous question, if say for example you didn't use the 33,465, but you made this, I don't know, 28,000, let's pretend, but then you use that 28,000 in this, then you still get a method mark, okay? And then you get a mark for the substitution and a mark for the answer. Right, let's move on to the next question. How are we doing for time? Plenty of time. Let's talk about Lily. Lily takes out a loan to the value of 150,000. Okay, that's fine. She repays the loan by means of equal monthly installments 
okay which makes she makes at the end of each month okay so she makes at the end of each month the first installment is made three months after the granting of the loan and the last installment is eight years after the granting of the loan the interest rate is 15 percent per annum compounded monthly okay so let's write down what we know we know i is 15 percent per annum compounded monthly so it's 0, 0,15 over 12 right we also know that the, the original amount of money that was um, loaned, the loan was 150,000. Okay, we want to know, it says calculate the value of the monthly installments. So do you agree that we need to use the present value formula? So we're going to take the 150,000 and work out what it would be after our, it says the interest rate is 15% per annum compounded monthly. Okay. And then what does it say? It says um, she pays the loan by equal monthly installments, which she pays the maintenance. The first installment is made three months after the granting of the loan. And the last installment is eight years, eight years after the um, granting of the loan. Eight years after the granting of the loan. Um, okay, so what we need to work out is first of all, we need to work out what the total 150,000 Rand would be, okay? So the reason we have to, we have to add in the interest rate of the 150,000 Rand for the three months, okay? So therefore we can say, well, 150,000 Rand multiplied by 1 plus 0, 0,15 over 12 to the power of 2. This accounts for the interest that we gained after this for this first three months. Okay, that's that interest that we've gained for the first three months. It has to equal to x over 1 minus the interest rate, I mean 1 Plus, oh, let me just erase that horrible thing so you don't get confused. Okay. Pen. Bracket. 1 plus 0, 0,15 over 12 to the negative. And now we have to work out how many payments they were made. Okay, so do you agree we got 12 times... Um, 8, which is 96, okay, but she replaced the loan by means and she only makes her first installment three months after. So the first two months she doesn't make any installments, so therefore we get to say 96 minus 2 is 94. So this is the power of negative 94, okay, all over 0,15 to the power over 12, okay? So that there is our equation. Now we need to solve for it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to the left-hand side. And we're going to go 150, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by 1 plus fraction. What did I do? Let's just delete that. Fraction, no, what did I do again? Delete. 0 0.15 all over 12 um, bracket to the power squared. Okay, equals. So this bit here, the first bit is equal to 153,733 and 44. 1537743. So we've got 153,000. Oh, and for some reason I'm going blank. 773.44. 773.44 equals this bit here. X multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus 0, 0,15 over 12 to the power of negative 94, close bracket, 
all over 0, 0,15 over 12. Okay, so now we need to solve for x. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and multiply it, okay? So I'm going to take my answer and multiply it by the fraction of 0 0.15 over 12. Okay, so now I've got rid of the denominator. Now what I'm going to do is work out what this bracket is and we're going to divide. So we're going to divide by the bracket. So we're going to go divide by this horrible bracket here. So we're going to go bracket 1 minus open bracket 1 plus fraction 0 0.15 all over 12 close bracket to the power of minus 97 close bracket equals whoopsie equals yay and we get 2744 so therefore we get that this is the answer x is 2744 comma um let me go find out comma seven seven comma seven seven rand so that is the monthly installments 2744 rand and 77 cents now it says convert the interest rate to an effective interest rate rounded to two decimal places. Now grade 12, this is the only formula that I know of in the whole finance section, which you actually have to learn, okay? Which says that one plus I is equal to one plus, and now it says yeah, convert the interest to effective interest rate rounded to two, two <laughs> two decimal places. So do you agree you've got one plus i, and that's the i effective, is equal to one plus i nominal to the power of n, okay? In this case, it's one plus i effective is equal to one plus, the interest rate is 0, 0,15 over 12, that's the nominal interest rate, to the power of 12. So therefore, i is going to equal what? So let's work it out. We're going to go 1 divided by, and it has to be, no, it's not. I'm going to clear. We're going to take all this and then subtract 1. So we're going to go 1 plus fraction 0 0.15 all over 12 equals to the power of 12 equals minus 1 equals, and the correct answer is 0 0.1607, okay, or 08. So it's 0, 0,1608. But remember, we have to change this to a percentage. How do you change the percentage? You multiply by 100. So it equals 16.08%. Hmm, not too bad, hey? Right, now we are doing some probability. Probability. So let us talk about probability. First of all, it says A and B are two events in a sample space. The probability of not A, in other words, the probability that A does not happen is 0 0.45. And the probability that B does happen is 0 0.35, okay? So the probability that A does not happen is 0 0.45 and the probability that B does happen is 0 point, what does it say? 0 0.35 and it says determine the probability of A. Well, the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of not A, okay, which is going to be 1 minus 0, 0,45, which is equal to 0, 0,55. There we go. So that was pretty easy. Now it says, <coughs> sorry, determine the probability of A or B if 
A and B are mutually exclusive events. Okay, so there's a rule. And it says, the probability of A or B, if they're mutually exclusive, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. That is the rule. In other words, that's how you work out if something is mutually exclusive by saying, checking if these two are equal. But now they're saying, if they're equal, I mean, if they're mutually exclusive, work out the probability of A or B. So we can use that rule. And therefore it is equal to 0, 0,85, I'm sorry, 0, 0,55 plus 0, 0,35, which equals 0, 0,9. Okay, not too bad, hey. Now it says determine, determine the probability of A and B if A and B are independent events. Okay, so again you've got a rule and the rule says probability of A and B should they be independent events is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. If there are independent events, then the probability, probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B, which is going to be 0, 0,55 times 0, 0,35. And then I need my calculator because I do not know how to do that. So it's 0, 0,55 multiplied by 0, 0,35 equals 0, 0,1925. You always run up to two decimal places. So if it's 0 0.19, 0, 0,19. Okay, so that's probability, not too bad. Right, some more probability. Okay, I like these ones with balls and buckets and colors and things. But that's just me. Okay, it says a blue and a green bucket are filled with some balls. Okay, the blue black blue bucket contains five white balls and three red balls. Okay, so we've got a blue bucket, a blue bucket, and it's got five white balls and three red balls. Okay, so I'm going to use a black to outline the white. So it's got five white balls, one, two, three, four, five, and it's got three red balls. Okay, one, two, three. The green bucket, there's a green bucket. It contains two white balls, two white balls, and seven red balls, and seven red balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it says a bucket is randomly selected and one ball is therefore thereafter randomly drawn from the bucket. Draw a tree diagram to represent the above information. Clearly indicate the probability of each branch of the tree. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the man. I think I'm, yeah. No? Yeah. And I'm just going to move this up so I have some space to write and then go from there. Okay, so we're going to just erase our little buckets. We don't really need them anyway. So do you agree that we start off with either a blue bracket or a green bucket, okay? A blue bucket or a green bucket. And it says that the bucket is randomly drawn, okay? So therefore, we've got a 50% chance from both of these, okay? Now, what it says, it says, draw a tree down to represent the above information, clearly indicate the probability of each branch of the tree, okay? Now they're saying, what would happen if we pulled out it says a bucket is random and one ball is randomly selected. So, the okay, again, let's just go. The blue bucket has got five white. Oh, it's got five white and it's got three red. The green black bucket has got two white and it's got seven red. Okay, so now we've got the bucket. Out of the number of balls that there are, which are eight, Three of them can be red. Okay, so we're going to have three out of eight are red. And then we've got five out of eight are white. Okay, if we look at our green bucket, we've got a 50% chance of pulling the green bucket. And then what do we have? We've got a two and seven is nine. So we've got two out of the seven are white. 
Okay. Well, let's do the red first. Seven out of nine are red. So you've got seven out of nine are red. And two out of two out of nine are red are white. Okay, two, two out of nine are white. So then it says clearly indicate the probability of each branch on the tree. Show all outcomes. So do you agree that this would be black? Bracket, blue bracket red, this would be blue white, this would be green red, and this would be green white. Okay, so now it says determine the probability that a red ball is drawn. So do you agree if I want to find a red ball, I, one of the things can happen, either I'm going to choose a blue bracket and then I'm going to choose a red ball, or I'm going to choose a green bracket and then choose a red ball. So therefore my probability of pulling a red ball is going to be what? Well obviously what we need to do is we need to say it's a half because we're going up here multiplied by three eighths plus a half multiplied by seven ninths and now we just need a calculator. So Let's get our calculator out. It's going to be 0.5 multiplied by a fraction of 3 over 8. Okay. Plus bracket 0.5 times. Okay. And this time it is 7 over 9 close bracket equals 83 out of 144. That's 83 out of 144. But if they'd asked percentage, what they said, what is the percentage chance that you could pull a red ball out? The answer would be 0.58. So therefore it is 58%. There's a 58% probability that I will pull out a red ball from these two packets. Right, let's do one more question. It says Eastern Cape requires new codes for the number plates because they didn't actually put in enough codes. It says the new codes consist of four letters followed by four digits as shown below. All codes end in EC. So you got B, C, D, F, and that number is equal to Eastern Cape. Okay, well, that doesn't equal to Eastern Cape, but it is a um, Eastern Cape. Um, number plate. It says the vowels A, E, I, O, U, and Q may not be used, and digits 1 to 9 are used. Letters and digits may be repeated. So what do they say? The first thing they say is determine how many number plates with different codes there can be. Well, that's pretty easy because how many letters are there in the alphabet? There are 26, but we're leaving out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what are we left with? Um, we're left with and Q, so we're left with 20. So we're left with 20 um, letters, but they are being used for a four digit number as such. So it's 20 times the power of four multiplied by, we've got the digits one through to nine, which is nine to the power of four as well, because there are four options. So if we had to go put that in our calculator, we would have 20 to the power of 4 multiplied by 9 to the power of 4 equals this huge number, okay, which works out to be, let's work it out, there's 3, that's 1,000. That's 760,000, that's 9,049,000, million, so it's 1 billion. Okay, so it is 1 billion, 49 million, 760,000 number plates that can be de de developed. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now it says determine the probability that a code that is randomly select selected will consist of even digits, digits which are not the same. Sure. Okay, so we want digits that are unequal 
even numbers. Okay, so if we want to do that, we want digits that are, what do we say? The digits that are unequal, even though they're even. Okay, digits that are unequal and even. So do you agree that normally you would say that you've got 20? Um, first of all, determine the part of the code will randomly say consists of, okay. So, do you agree that it would have to be, um, hang on, let's think about this. Okay, first of all, we've got the number of digits that are unequal, okay? Even, they are unequal even numbers. It's going to be, how many have you got? 20 factorial, to, I mean 20 to the power of 4, okay? Multiplied by 4 factorial, okay? Multiplied by 4 factorial. Okay, so you end up with what? Okay, um, in fact, I'm afraid grade 12, I've run out of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this question tomorrow and we are going to continue with this question and I'll explain where I get the 20 to the power of 4 multiplied by the 4 factorial. Have a great day.